Hey everyone, in this video we are actually going to create a Facebook ad campaign from start to finish. Um, I've recorded videos on all of these pieces individually and I hope you've reviewed those. Um, but this is actually taking all of those pieces, putting them together and creating and starting our campaign. So if you guys are ready, let's jump in. This is the business manager. Again, I'm using business manager because it's a lot easier. If you don't have business manager, just go to your regular Facebook ad account and then go to create campaign. Uh, I'm starting one from scratch and we are going to use the traffic consideration. Uh, that is the most common. That is the one I would suggest for you guys who are just beginning. Um, once you guys are a little bit more advanced, I'll, I'll record some videos on using some of the other campaign types, but traffic for right now is the best option. So click this drop down and then name our campaign. And I'm going to do probably example two. Um, you can name your ad sets right now if you want to. You certainly don't have to, but I'm going to, and I'm just going to rename them later on. And then add, I'll add one. I'm going to name these add one, even though this is example two, because in this campaign, this is still the first ad set and this is still the first ad. Um, if I was doing a campaign with more than one ad set, I would name them ad set, you know, two, three, four, five. But second campaign example, but it's still the first ad set in the campaign uh, and the first ad in the campaign. So um, once you're done, you can hit continue. And this brings up our campaign settings, special ad categories, leave this blank, buying type auction, Facebook is an auction, so we're going to leave that blank. Although if you click on it, uh, it doesn't really give you many options. Sometimes it does, depending on uh, what campaign objective you select with the traffic, it doesn't give you any option besides uh, auction. Uh, if you want to click on more options, um, you can see and you can set a campaign spending limit. Remember, we went over this um, in the campaign types. Um, you can set a spending limit if you want to. I am not going to. A-B test. Um, you can click on learn more if you want to read about an A-B test, but given that I believe a lot of um, budgets for these campaigns are going to be relatively small, I would not do an A-B test. Um, and I wouldn't do an A-B test unless you can spend, you know, at maybe $40 a day. Um, then you can do an A-B test because you can test different copy, different images, uh, different audiences, things like that. But um, given that these are going to be relatively small budget, I wouldn't bother doing uh, A-B tests. And also this feature really isn't that great. Um, I, li I like to do A-B tests manually, but I, Facebook's feature uh, here to run A-B tests, I just don't find that reliable. So uh, leave that alone for now, but you're more than welcome to play with it later on. Campaign budget optimization. Uh, if you remember, this is what we were talking about. This is not going to be an option soon. Um, I'm surprised Facebook hasn't made it mandatory already. I, I thought they were going to at the beginning of the year, but um, pretty soon um, you have to set your budget at the campaign level, uh, which is a better option, I, I believe, because Facebook does a pretty good job already of determining uh, where to spend the budget, um, what ad groups to spend the budget, what, what ads to spend the budget on. So. Um, if this is not already clicked, go ahead and click it, turn it on, and then select your daily budget. Um, you can also do a lifetime budget if you have an end date for your campaign. If you're running an event, if you're running an open house, or you're running, you know, a, like a meet and greet, something like that, on, you know, Friday the 15th, and you want these ads to run until the 14th, um, then do a lifetime budget. You know, instead of a daily budget, tell Facebook, I'm I'm running these ads until the 14th, and I want to spend you know, a hundred dollars. Then, you know, one day it might spend 10, another day it might spend 50, another day it might spend 20, but it's going to spend a hundred dollars for the whole lifetime of the campaign. But for you guys, for right now, I would just do daily budget and then let me see and do 10. So, um, daily budget, $10 a day or whatever your budget is. Um, I would go ahead and, and set it there. Show more options, add scheduling, run ads all the time. If you did have an end date, um, such as an event or, or anything like that, you can go ahead and, um, and, and select that option. But we don't, so um, go ahead and click next. Ad set, remember we're naming the ad set for our audience. So I'm gonna leave that as it is right now and then I'm gonna change it later on. 
Um, traffic is running to the website. I'm not using dynamic creative budget and schedule. We're going to leave that alone. Uh, set an end date if you want to. We're not going to um, add spend limits. Again, um, you can review the video on ad sets if you want. I would just leave that as it is for now. Create a new audience. Um, so I'm going to target. I don't have any say. I do have a saved audience. Um, that I did when we went over the ad set video, but um, for this example, I'm just gonna create my audience manually. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the United States as a whole, and I'm going to target people living in the city of Austin, and I'm gonna do 25 mile radius is a little bit too much, but I'm gonna do, I'm try to do 15, and that slider is a little annoying sometimes, so I think you can just type in 15 there. 15 mile radius. Okay, and then I'm also going to target people between the ages of, I'm gonna do 27 to uh, 40. Okay, so people in Austin, 15 mile radius of Austin, ages 27 to 40, all genders. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. I'm gonna target men and women, even though I feel like um, maybe women, Ashley, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone for now. I'm gonna target men and women. You might wanna just do women, um, or you might wanna do you know, one ad for men and one ad for women. If you wanna do one ad group that only targets men, um, then go ahead and do that, and then you can create an ad specifically for dads. Um, and you know, if you wanna do you know, the ad group, if you just wanna target women, you can do uh, an ad that just targets women. You can say, hey moms, things like that. Um, if, since we're targeting all genders here, you don't necessarily want to create an ad that says, hey, hey mom or hey dad, since you know we're targeting all. So we just kind of want to leave it broad. Okay, and then go down to the detailed targeting section. And I'm going to type in parents. Parents with preschoolers. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to leave that alone. I want to target parents of preschoolers in Austin, Texas between 27 and 40. And you can go over here and see our audience is defined. This is how many people we're, we're probably going to be reaching. And people are going to see your ad more than once. Don't worry if this number is really low. Um, people are going to see this you know, several times before they actually convert. So um, don't worry about this number too much. I'm not going to exclude any audiences. I'm not going to narrow any audiences. If you're curious about these, uh, go back and review the um, ad set um, uh, video uh, for explanations on what these are. I'm also not going to use the detailed targeting expansion. Uh, again, if you're not quite sure what this is, go back and review that video. Uh, I explain that a little bit more and why it might not be such a good idea. Leave it as all languages. Show more options. Whoops, it made it jump to the top. Um, but show more options, leave it as automatic placements. Again, Facebook does a pretty good job of, of figuring out where your audience is, uh, where they're clicking, leave it alone. Years ago, we used to do manual placements, not so much today. Um, if you click show more options, it just gives you more information about brand safety, inventories. You can leave those alone. Optimization and delivery, um, optimize for link clicks, leave that alone. Show more options. When you get charged, uh, if you hover over that, the selected option determines when you'll pay for an ad. For many optimization goals, you'll pay each time your ad is served, known as an impression. Some optimization goals also let you choose between impressions and actions, such as links, link clicks. The recommended option shown here balances efficient spending of your budget to achieve the objective with easy understanding of your results. Basically what that means is Facebook is charging you when they serve your ad to a thousand people. Once a thousand people see your ad, then you get charged. I like that option better because it ensures that your budget goes further. Uh, if you do per link click, if you want to change that and only char get charged when people click on your ad, um, your budget could run out a lot sooner and then you're going to be left, you know, your ad's not going to show for the majority of the day because you've, you've run out of budget early on uh, and you have nothing left to spend. So I would leave it as impression. Uh, later on during optimization, um, you are more than likely, or more than um, 
go ahead and, and test that um, and, and see if that works better for you. But I think you'll get more for your budget if you leave it on impression. Okay, and then double check everything. Um, go back up. So we're targeting men and women between 27 and 40 preschoolers. I'm 15 mile radius of Austin. I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna rename this ad set um, because I wanna know who I'm targeting before I even have to click into the ad set to see. Men and women, 27 to 40. Um, preschoolers between, I think it was between three and five. So um, men and women between 27 and 40, 15 mile radius of Austin, targeting preschoolers. Uh, between the ages of three and five. And that's it, that's all the information you have to put. And basically that just tells us you know, who we're targeting. We don't even have to go into the ad set and say like, hey, I don't remember who I was targeting. We can just look at the title and see. So once that is all set, go ahead and click next. Okay, and this is our ad. These little pop-ups come up, but they're just click out of them. Uh, add one, I'm going to do a video. Oops. Uh, if you were to create another ad in this ad set, you could do add two video or add two video two. Um, but make sure the naming conventions are um, the same. That way it causes less confusion. If you wanted to create another ad group, you could do, you know, in test audiences, you could do Austin 50 miles, women 27 to 40. Um, but just make sure that the ad uh, naming conventions that you use are similar and it just, it, it just lessens confusion for whoever is looking at your account. Uh, make sure the Facebook page is selected as well as the Instagram account. Um, and I explain these on the ad creation, why you need to have the page and ad accounts connected to your business manager. Let's go ahead and review that video again if you're not quite sure. Um, and then we want to go down and create an ad. We're going to be using a video here. Don't worry about these options. So keep scrolling and I'm going to add a video. And since I used this example in our last video, it's already uploaded to the account. Sometimes these might not show up. Sometimes they do. If you're impatient like I am, just go ahead and hit done, and then you can hit um, edit later on. Just you can click these drop downs and see what they look like. Um, but I think we're good. Primary text, um, go ahead and refer back to the Facebook ad templates that we provide you or refer back to your own um, copy um, because you definitely don't want to wait till the very last minute to write Facebook ad copy. You, you really want to put some time into these and, and you want to really think about what you're going to say. Please do not wait until you're ready to create an ad to start thinking of you know, what to write in your ad. Because um, it, it usually doesn't produce a very good ad and then it's, you know, no one's going to click on it's not going to perform very well. Um, so I use the headline that we provide and the primary text that we provide. Um, for this one, uh, I'm just going to make up a description and say join today. You could do, you know, enroll now or, you know, now processing enrollments or, you know, um, come visit us or, or, you know, something like that. So because this ad example had to do with Busy Bees, I just went and found a Busy Bees Montessori. So I'm just going to copy that URL. Um, and I'm sorry if if anyone here is from Busy Bees, I'm, I'm copying, but um, that was just the template that we provided. So I just wanted to um, make sure the URL was, was similar. Um, display link, remember this is optional. Um, if we don't have anything here, Facebook is just gonna show the bb-montessori.com. Uh, it's just gonna show you know basically the same URL that we have. But if we want a vanity URL, we do bbmontessori.com. This base URL has to be the same. This does not necessarily, whatever we put afterwards, this does not have to be a valid URL. This is just for show. This is a vanity URL that is just used for, um, Basically, it's just used for looks. Um, 
We can do bb.com or bb slash Montessori.com. Have fun. We could put, you know, or spring 2022 or, you know, something like that. Does not have to be an actual valid URL that works. It's just for looks. Call extension. Um, we can show if we want to. I'm not going to use that right now. I, I wouldn't suggest. Um, call to action. Learn more is the most common one that you'll be using. So I would suggest you just leave it at learn more or, um, you know, contact us. Or if you're trying to send people to a landing page where they can book a tour, um, do book now. Um, if people click on book now and they go to a landing page with a calendar that they can actually book a, a tour with you guys, um, the book now would, would work really well. Or reply now um, would, would work fine. Um, but just learn more is, is typically the one that we use. Tracking, um, make sure this is selected. My pixel is gray just because I, this is a dummy account and I don't actually have a pixel. I have a pi different pixel installed on my website, but it's not this one. So your uh, pixel should be green. If it's red, then that likely means it's not installed properly or you just haven't gotten any traffic to your website. Um, but if it's anything other than green, uh, take a screenshot, reach out to us um, and just you know, make sure that it's set up properly because we don't want to run a whole bunch of traffic and, and get a lot of clicks and not record those because eventually we want to use remarketing. Um, so that's it. Um, build the URL parameter if you want to. You certainly don't have to. If you are using a CRM and actively and meticulously tracking where every link click has come from, go ahead and do this. Um, but you certainly don't have to. Um, in this example, I'm not going to use those. So uh, I would suggest you go back up to the very top and just do a quick run through of everything again, add one video, make sure the Facebook and Instagram pages are good. Single image, add creative, make sure spelling and grammar is all good um, because people will notice if something is spelled wrong. Um, it's, it's usually the first thing that people comment on. Uh, these are emojis, um, there's, there's a, a site here that I'll connect, I'll link, um, where you can just get like a whole bunch of emojis if you wanna um, add some to your copy, just click on it and then it'll show up here and then click copy and then you can actually just paste it right in the ad. Don't use too many because emojis can sometimes make um, the ad look unprofessional, um, but used correctly, they can draw attention to the ad. So when people are scrolling, if they see emojis, it kind of makes the ad pop. Um, so certainly use those, but don't go too overboard. Um, and that's it. Once everything looks good, then go ahead and hit publish. Give it a second, and then you should get a green box up here saying that everything has published correctly and your ad is running. So this green check means that we're good to go. Um, and our ad is up and running, so we can X that out. And it, it leaves you on the ad page, but then you can just select the X. Um, again, we're on the ad page. Uh, this didn't load right, so this is the campaigns. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off right now. And then unselect these options. Your ad will go into um, the reviewing phase for a little bit, especially if you have a brand new account. Um, it'll need to be reviewed. It, it could take up to 24 hours. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So be patient. Your ad is not gonna start running right away. Leave it, um, check back in a few hours. You'll probably get an email when the ad has been approved and starts running. Um, so leave the ad running for a little bit and then uh, come back and check on it. If it's been about a day or two days or even three days and your ad is still not running, uh, then we'll need to contact Facebook support because it, it's either something's wrong with it or you know maybe it got stuck in the queue and hasn't been reviewed um, or you know there's another problem. So give it a little while. It usually takes about 24 hours. Um, delivery will say pending approval or waiting review or, or something like that. But um, yeah, so that is how to create a Facebook ad or a Facebook campaign um, from start to finish. If you have any questions on anything um, like that, let us know and we'll see you in the next training.